Good afternoon. Hey, everybody. We're so excited to be here with you. You guys are the real MVPs for um, pushing through. I know there's lots of fun things ahead tonight at Ignite. Um, for those of us, for those of you watching um, online, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. I'm Cynthia Johnson. I'm on the product marketing team for Copilot. And I'm super excited today to be joining Allison, Jesus, and Martina to share with you some of the top learnings and adoption resources available now to help accelerate your adoption journey. For most customers today, the personal productivity gains and benefits like time savings of Copilot are super clear. The big question that we're hearing now from customers, and maybe many of you are also thinking about, is how do we move beyond personal productivity and start achieving true business value? For most organizations, that means finding ways to apply AI in a way that's measurable and that leads to an increase in revenue, a decrease in costs, and an improvement in your overall employee experience. It's hard to believe that M365 Copilot GA'd just about a year ago. Since then, it's gone from an AI assistant to truly a full AI transformation solution. It all starts with business chat, which is a personalized experience across the web and work scopes. You get access to all of that AI goodness across the M365 apps that you use every day. And many of you have heard lots of the agent announcements at Ignite this year. Um, we're very excited about Copilot Studio. And now users and makers will both be able to automate those business processes really, really easily right in product. Finally, we're providing new tools. We've announced uh, Copilot Analytics that are going to help you drive adoption and measurement um, with both the Copilot dashboard and some of the new impact reports we'll share. How many of you here are using Copilot today? Awesome. We're very excited to see that already 70% of Fortune 500 companies are adopting Copilot. And we're seeing a huge increase in usage intensity. And over the past six months, we've already deployed 150 new capabilities. Users are saying they love the intuitive interface and how Copilot is readily available right there in the apps they use every day. Many of us already can't imagine working without it. In fact, we're hearing 80% of users would be disappointed if they lost access. At the same time, there's a lot of opportunity to improve the adoption journey and to maximize the impact we're getting from Copilot. Unfortunately, today, only 37% of users believe that they're able to fully realize the potential of Copilot. Only 53% feel like they know exactly what tasks to use Copilot for. And only 46% feel like they're equipped to make the best use of Copilot. So there's a lot we can do here. And working through our own internal deployment, as well as with all of our early access customers, we've come up with these three steps that are really the key to accelerating that impact with your organization. So first, getting ready. You want to make sure that you have your business leaders on board and you have a clear north star of what goals you're trying to achieve and what you're really trying to move the needle on. You want to make sure that you're building a culture of continuous learning, and that's really going to help you drive adoption, especially the peer-to-peer -peer learning. I think ultimately from some of the great announcements you'll hear on Prompt Gallery, um, people want to hear from others in, on their team, in their org, um, and what's working for them. And finally, um, we'll talk about Copilot Analytics, and you want to make sure that you have clear, measurable metrics that you're tracking over time and comparing to your baseline when you started out. So let's jump in. If we start with get ready, one of the biggest questions we get is, where do I start? Our research shows that customers who are accelerating their um, ROI the quickest are the ones that select a specific function and then concentrate licenses within that team. So you want to roll out to your whole sales team first or your whole customer service team, for example. Um, but it can still be hard to know where to start. So some helpful rules of thumb um, that we've shared are think about business processes that are people intensive, first of all. Second of all, where are there repetitive tasks? So anywhere you know, there's monotonous things that people are repeating over and over again, usually that's ripe for automation um, and for Copilot to really help you out. And finally, are there highly measurable 
KPIs that you can apply here. Um, so for example, is there an SLA, um, a win rate, et cetera, that you can easily measure? Hopefully you've seen this already this week, but um, we've created a blueprint working, again, in our own internal deployment, as well as with customers, of those key processes where Copilot is driving significant impact. So you want to think about which functional area and which types of business processes do I want to start with? And once you've identified that, think about those KPIs. Um, so I'll show you the scenario library in a moment. You'll be able to find all of these processes and KPIs, as well as more. Um, we're always adding as we learn from you and from our customers. But these are a great starting point to help you envision. At Microsoft, we started our internal deployment with our customer-facing teams. And that meant our sales team, our customer service teams were some of the first ones that got access and got to jump in and start developing those use cases that were most relevant for them. Our sales team is one of the largest in the world. There's over 60,000 sellers spread out over 200 countries. Let me show you, working with them, we've pulled all of the great use cases that they've developed that are really working for them um, into the library. You can start with sales, or you can explore what may make most sense for your team. So I'll, if you want to follow along here with me, I'm going to jump into the library. Um, you can go directly to the AKA link here, or I recommend checking out the Copilot Success Kit. This is a great starting point as well. Um, the kit, think of it as the one-stop shop where we'll continually update all of the adoption resources with the latest announcements and the latest assets, et cetera, to make sure that you have the latest and greatest. Once you land on the success kit, you'll see some of my favorite um, assets and our, our top downloads are, one, the implementation overview. This is gonna give you a high-level understanding of that whole journey, both across human change and technical readiness to make sure that your team is ready for what's ahead. I also really recommend the user engagement toolkit. This comes with tons of templates that are downloadable. You can customize them a little bit. You can send them right out to your users, um, including weekly, um, you know, weekly tips, tricks, prompts, all connected to the prompt gallery as well in product that you'll hear about today. So from here in the success kit, you can jump over to the scenario library, and we have both functional and industry scenarios. So you can you know, look into those functional areas. We have nine now um, available, as well as industries. But let's take a look at sales. If you jump over, you'll see on the landing page, you'll find our own customer zero uh, case study. So you can see what are those use cases that are really impacting um, our teams, as well as the impact that we're already seeing. You'll also find customer stories and use cases from top customers. As you kind of scroll down, you'll see some of those KPIs. You can learn more about those. And we're working really closely with our friends on the Copilot Analytics team to, over time, bring this in product. And you'll be able to measure these um, right in either the Copilot dashboard or with some of the Viva business impact reports. You'll be able to explore what these business processes looked like before AI, as well as some of those key scenarios to start with Copilot. And finally, the day in the life, these can be really helpful for users to kind of get an idea of, hey, what does this look like for another account manager or another person in my role? Um, what are some of those, their favorite tasks and tips so that you know, others can get inspiration? All right, so one of our favorite use cases um, internally at Microsoft with our sales team is responding to an RFP. This is a very popular, you know, obviously many of you have probably worked on proposals, sales proposals, responding to um, requests, et cetera. Once you land in that scenario here, you'll be able to see all the steps to actually go ahead and implement that scenario. You'll know what solutions you need, um, as well as the connect it's connected to the prompts in prompt gallery, so you'll be able to jump right in. So here you can see um, which of these, many of these steps actually already have prompts, as I mentioned, and many of them actually even have demo video, so you can walk your users through that um, right from there. All right, so next, I'm gonna share a demo. So let's pretend that I am a seller, and I've gotten a request for an RFP, which is a process that typically can take days, if not weeks, um, to get the whole team together, especially at a company as big as Microsoft, making sure we understand what's happening in that customer account, who's talked to them. Um, so I start out in Word. I'll pop open Copilot and ask for a summary so that I don't have to read the whole doc. Quickly, you'll see Copilot brings up a summary. 
gives me an idea of what this customer is really looking for. Then I'll pop over to Edge, and in the web scope, I can actually ask it to research the customer, let me know what's going on in terms of their latest annual report, maybe anything in the news, and I quickly get some highlights that can help me get a little bit more context. Then I'll switch over to the Work tab, and here I can ask, what's going on with this customer? With the agent connection to my CRM, it'll actually pull up all of those interactions, what meetings others across my organization are having with the customer, and any things that I need to, pitfalls I need to avoid, or things I need to keep in mind. All right, now I'm ready to pull together my agent. So I'll jump over to Studio. Here, I can pull in as many knowledge sources as I want. I can use templates that my organization has for sales proposals. I can also pull in customer documents or any information. You can then access that agent from many different sources, including Teams. So here, I go to Teams, and actually, I can actually start asking those questions that the customer is looking for right in Teams, and I'll get some really clear and concise answers. Next, I'm going to work with my team, prep for a meeting to make sure we're all on the same page to get this proposal out to the customer. Copilot will help me draft an agenda to make sure we hit all the points. And then afterwards, I can use Copilot Recap to make sure we follow up on all of the loose ends and we're ready and all on the same page. Finally, I'll go back to Word and I'll ask Copilot to help me clean up the proposal, make sure I'm ready to send. It recommends that I spend a little more time on the executive summary. So I'll go pull up Copilot and ask, what are some recommendations and ways to make this a little more informative upfront? Once I'm happy with those changes, I'm ready to send it out. So I'll go up to Outlook, ask Copilot to help me draft an email. And once I'm happy, I can generate it, keep it, and I'm ready to send. This process used to take our sellers days and days, especially across aligning, uh, aligning so many people, making sure that we all had a cohesive story uh, and we all know what's going on with our customer. Using this use case and many others that our sales team has kind of organically created for themselves, which we are now sharing with you both in the library and the prompt gallery, we've seen a 9.4 increase higher in revenue per seller. We've also seen a 20% increase in the number of deals closed and won. So Copilot is making a huge difference, but it's so important to move beyond those simple personal productivity use cases, which are awesome, but once you start getting into those function-specific um, flows, it, the impact is really, um, really amazing. All right, I also wanted to share, we have another UX for the Scenario Library. There is an app you can use um, if you guys want to check it out. Actually, this one is really helpful if you're preparing um, trainings for your users or maybe you're, you're preparing for a leadership meeting to try to hone in on those priority scenarios. You can actually click on specific um, functions or specific industries and download a customized uh, PowerPoint, because we all love PowerPoint, um, with all of those flows that you saw earlier. So here, I'll select FSI, because that's one of our um, great industry options. And you'll see, once you download this customized deck, you'll get an overview, you'll get, an in, you get insight into those KPIs, the use cases by role, and you'll be able to see the day in the life examples as well. So here for financial services, you can see some of the areas where customers are really finding Copilot value. And you can explore some of those specific scenarios. One of the ones that our insurance companies, uh, insurance customers are really, is really resonating with them is creating a quote and automating that quote creation process. So if we take a look at that one real quick, you'll see you get the entire flow here as well. Um, we'll keep adding more and more agent scenarios here that um, are cream of the crop working with our customers. You'll see here, in terms of creating a quote, customers are using it to connect to their internal tools, so you can really quickly create a risk assessment, you can understand everything going on with your customer history, and then you can actually get to that cost estimation um, in just a few minutes. We also have the day in the life examples, and um, I'm always, you know, we, myself, or the prompt gallery team, we're always looking for new examples, new scenarios, new prompts that are really resonating with your users, so always feel free to reach out and let us know what's working best. Um, with that, once you have your scenarios identified and you feel really good um, about moving forward to implementing and to enabling your users, then you're ready to move into the second stage, driving adoption. I'm gonna pass it over to Allison to share more. Yeah.
All right, thank you all so much. My name is Allison Genesta. I'm a senior product marketing manager on the co-pilot team as well. I'm really excited to share with you some really great learnings that we've gotten over the past several weeks. But let me start with a show of hands. How many people in the audience are responsible for driving co-pilot adoption within their organization? Amazing, so more than half of you, that's really exciting. Um, so as part of our internal co-pilot rollout at Microsoft, um, we've developed a co-pilot experiment that really helps to uncover key insights that really help drive the needle and what it takes to be able to turn co-pilot into a daily habit for your end users. We've packaged these up into three best practices that you can begin implementing today. And the tools that you can leverage to really make these best practices real within your organization. The first best practice is all about top-down communications and the role that leaders play in making AI real for the users within their functional group or area. The second is all about peer network effects and that powerful role that we as a team can really help in harnessing AI and inspiring each other on what's possible with Copilot. And the last is all about experimentation and learning and how this can really be what makes it truly something that creates that daily habit by that trial and error process that we're all going through when learning how to use generative AI for the very first time. So let's start with the first best practice, top-down communications. What we've learned through our co-pilot experiment is that leadership signals are far more impactful than you realize. In fact, we saw a 37% increase in co-pilot usage the day after a leader would send an email out to their team about how they're using co-pilot. It could be as simple as a favorite prompt that really surprised and delight them, or it could be a really great use case that they uncovered that helped them with tremendous time savings. To support you with this uh, leadership communications, we have our co-pilot success kit that Cynthia alluded to earlier. And this is a turnkey kit that you, can that you can leverage to be able to send out leadership communications. And what's great is they're customizable. So you're able to customize it with your company name, your company logo, and this is an easy way to be able to get those weekly communications out from your leadership team. It also includes a number of different email templates that are tailored to these functional areas that Cynthia was talking about, whether you're starting with sales or finance or HR. And then it also includes manager resources because we know it's very important that managers are on board and they're willing to talk about how Copilot is going to help the entire team in their day to day. So now let's talk about the second best practice that we learned through our Copilot experiment. And that's the power of peer network effects. And what we learned is that every adoption strategy should have a power user pathway. Why power users, you might ask? What's the value in having more and more power users that you're converting within your functional area? Well, what we learned through our experiments is that power users are, in fact, 1.7 times more likely to believe that Copilot can actually help them achieve their business goals and objectives. We also learned that power users are 2.4 times more likely to think about how Copilot can help them in solving a business challenge. They really have an AI-first approach to the way that they work. And then the last, which is even most exciting, is the fact that 4.5, or power users are 4.5 times more likely to believe that they can help other people on their team learn how to use Copilot. So the more and more power users that you're able to convert within a functional team, the more and more people that you have to be able to inspire and help others su succeed with Copilot. Our Copilot prompt gallery, many of you might be familiar with this as Copilot Lab. Uh, formerly known, but today we're talking about how Copilot Prompt Gallery can really help to boost AI confidence and adoption through prompting. Copilot Prompt Gallery includes a variety of inspirational prompt collections that really helps meet that Copilot beginner on their first few days. And we've seen true impact with the gallery helping to really drive retention in that early phase of Copilot usage. So much so that we found that um, people that engage with the gallery within their first seven days of using Copilot have a 20% higher likelihood to return using Copilot that month. And we have over uh, close to a thousand different prompts now in the gallery that's spanning across a variety of roles, industries, and different Copilot apps. A key differentiator about the 
Prom Gallery as well, is that it is fully integrated within the Copilot product. This is something that meets users in the flow of work, providing inspiration when they need it, whether that's in business chat, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and more. And then it also, would make sh it also enables viral prompt sharing and discovery. And as we really think about what's a great tool that we can give our power users to be able to share their Copilot success, this is a really great resource that they now have at their fingertips where they can create their own prompts save them, and share them with members on their team to drive that inspiration. And as I mentioned before, it's truly built to meet every people, every person on their full journey with Copilot. So let's talk about a key scenario on how we can unlock the value of the Copilot prompt gallery. So this scenario is going to be talking about an organizational leader. He's a VP of sales and a power user. Um, her name is Christine. And I'm going to invite up our product leader of Copilot Prompt Gallery to take us through this scenario and how you can leverage peer network effects. Thank you, Alison. So my name is Jesus Barrera Ramos, and I'm the group product manager for Copilot Prompt Gallery. I'm really excited to be here today to share with you what's available and what we're working on to help you accelerate Copilot adoption within your organizations. Now, Alison already introduced you to our two personas in the story. Now, Christine, this is her inbox. Now, she spots an email from Anton. This email highlights a prompt that he found interesting and he shared with his organization. Now, being the VP of sales and Christine's VP, she's super eager to try this prompt as soon as possible. Now, she can do that right there in the email by clicking on Try Prompting Copilot. This takes her right into business chat and enters Anton's prompt into the input box for her. This connection between prompt gallery, Outlook email, and business chat is just one example of the integration in-app that prompt gallery brings. And this extends into other Microsoft 365 apps like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and as you'll see in a bit, coming to Teams. Now let's get back to this chat. And Christine wants to tweak this prompt to make it her own and fit her needs. So she does that by asking Copilot to focus on financial consulting and runs the prompt. Now, when Copilot responds, There you go. This is a great response for Christine. She likes it. She wants to make sure that she can reuse the prompt for later. Available now, she can do that easily within business chat by hovering over the prompt she typed and clicking Save. This saves that prompt right into prompt gallery and Copilot gives her a confirmation of where to find it. So let's click. In here, she can save her latest prompt, or rather, she can see her latest prompt and previous prompts that she has saved. Not only that, she'll be able to see all the prompts that have been shared to all the teams that she's part of. We'll see a little bit more about that later. In addition to that, she gets to see suggested prompts. That includes prompts that are new in the organization and trending in the organization, as well as the full catalog of Microsoft curated prompt collections. Like as Cynthia and Allison mentioned, we design for specific roles, scenarios, and industries. 
And just last week, we added three more, specifically designed for roles in information technology, customer support, and legal. Now, let's go back to Cynthia's, rather, Christine's safe promise. In here, she believes that the prompt that she just saved would help one of her coworkers, John. She wants to share it with him. She can do that by clicking on Share within Prompt Gallery. And available now, she can get a copy of a link that goes to the prompt and does what uh, you saw in the email as well. It goes directly to the right copilot and inserts that prompt. Now, this link can be copied in any place where she needs to, including things like a post in Viva Engage or any other places. In addition to that, Christine gets two other options to share. Currently rolling as private preview, she can roll, rather, share to Teams and email. Let's start with email. Now, when she does that, a nicely crafted email is created for her, highlighting her prompt and providing a way for the recipient to click it. This is how Anton shared his prompt within the whole sales organization. And Christine can do the same with her peers. In this case, she is going to share it with John and click send. As a power user, Christine is really excited that she can help her coworkers get proficient with Copilot and succeed with it. Now, having done that, she wants to get going with her rest of the day. We're still in business chat, so she opens the side panel. In here, she can see the agents that she has access to including those created by her organization, designed specifically for her role, and deployed across the tenant. She finds, in our example, Contoso Lista Scout, one of those agents created just for her. When she clicks on it, a set of conversation starters are displayed for her to choose from. But as more prompts are added for this agent, those can be found within the in-app experience of prompt gallery. This way, she can find the right prompt for any of the tasks. By doing that, actually, this happens because Copilot Prompt Gallery loads automatically all the prompts for an agent that Christine uses. By doing that, we reinforce the Copilot Prompt Gallery as the place for her to find all the prompts that she has access to, including agents. Now, again, Christine is super excited, and as an enthusiast of Copilot within the organization, she wants to make sure that her sales team succeeds. And she knows that the marketing, there's a marketing event coming up. She knows or believes that this prompt within this agent will help her sales team. And this time she wants to share this prompt directly to the Microsoft Teams created for the sales department. She can do it by clicking on share to team. In this option, she can select which team she wants to share to. She chooses sales teams this time. When she clicks share, that prompt is immediately available to all employees and coworkers that are part of that Microsoft Teams for that department. Not only that, Copilot confirms that it has been done and offers her a way to go and see that prompt in context within that team. Coming soon, and we'll start rolling this out as a private preview in the next few weeks, Christine can go directly to that teams and see all the prompts that have been shared to that department, to that Microsoft Teams, all there within the prompts section of Teams. And it's not only those that she has shared, but every prompt that has been shared by others within that team, including those prompts 
that are inside agents. This leverages a new app that they, we are working on, which is the Copilot Prom Gallery app for Teams, Outlook, and Microsoft 365 hubs. In here, she has the full extent of the gallery, same as in-app, but in a bigger format where she can get to browse and expand and search later, not only new prompts for the organization, but also the trending prompts in it. In this bigger format, she can browse and expand any of these sections. For example, here, she wants to see all the new prompts that have been made available within that uh, organization. And she will have access to another capability that we're working on for Copilot Prompt Gallery, an ability for any user to like prompts that they can see within our experience. In this case, for example, she can like these two prompts. Now, we believe that between like, trending, and sharing, these are very powerful capabilities in Copilot Prompt Gallery that will help feed that peer network effect to accelerate Copilot adoption within your organization. Now, as part of this experience, now also Christine can look at different pivots and she wants to see what are the, out of the new prompts that have been shared in the organization, which are the most liked. And she can do that basic filters right there within prompt gallery. This is the set of features that we have made available and that will be coming very soon to Copilot Prom Gallery, with many of, them, many of them already rolling out to private preview and going out to GA shortly after. I'm really excited that I had the opportunity to share this with you. I hope you're also excited to be able to use them as much as we're eager to keep rolling these capabilities to you. Thank you all, and I'm going to call Alison back. Thank you so much. All right. Um, so yes, so continuing on our best practices uh, for co-pilot adoption. The third best practice is all about experimentation and learning, and the magic that happens when people are able to come together and collectively and synchronously work with co-pilot. Over the course of a six-week period, we included a variety of weekly learning workshops and even a co-pilot day that was able to enable people within a functional group to do a trial and error with co-pilot that really helped them get to true aha moments that drove up to a 60% uh, increase in usage over that six-week time frame. One of the great tools that we learned about was a, the power of a co-pilot promptathon and really being a safe place for teams to come together and dedicate time to doing that trial and error with Copilot by pulling together prompts. It's a combination of learning about the art and science of prompting, experimentation, where people are challenged to reinvent the way that they're approaching a specific project or process with Copilot, and then also has some fun learning and gamification tied to it, where people are leaving the Promptathon with badges and certificates to really be proud about the work that they did together as a team. After the Promptathon, we also know that's really important that people continue their, their learning journey asynchronously. And we have our Copilot upskilling resources available to each and every user. Um, starting with our Copilot Academy, which is available in Viva Learning. And then we also have live and on-demand trainings that are geared towards a functional Copilot use case. So people that are in HR, sales, marketing, et cetera, they're able to tune into these virtual trainings um, and really continue their learning journey with Copilot. All right. So now that we've talked about ways to drive adoption through our great learnings and best practices that we've gained over the past several weeks, let's talk about how we can really measure impact that converts into bottom line results within your organization. Cynthia alluded to this previously, but we're super excited to announce that we have Copilot Analytics that's automatically included within your Microsoft 365 Copilot license. It includes an out-of-the-box reporting solution, which many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with and using today, and that is our Copilot dashboard. 
but we're excited to announce our business impact reports, which is a new addition to our Copilot analytics offering, which provides in-depth analysis that really is tailored to key KPIs and business metrics. Within the Copilot dashboard, you'll notice that there are three key tabs across the top where you're able to get ready by testing out eligibility status, driving adoption by seeing the usage trends that are happening within certain groups that you are enabling, and then also measuring impact and even understanding user sentiment, which is really important. And then we talk about our new business impact reports. We're really excited about the deeper level of analysis that th this will provide, provide to you. It helps you to understand key business KPIs in a Power BI application, and you'll also be able to customize your analysis with your own business data. If you're interested in learning more about our new Copilot Analytics offering, we encourage you to visit the Friday session with the Viva team while they'll be giving end-to-end -end demos of all of these new reports and capabilities with Viva. All right. So it wouldn't be a good adoption session without actually having an MVP to join us on stage to talk about her learnings that she's had. I'm so excited to introduce to you Martina. She's a phenomenal MVP that has helped to drive co-pilot deployment and adoption within her organization and has helped several other customers do the same. Welcome, Martina. Thank you, Alison. So, Thank you, and I was invited to this session a couple of days ago. And the intention we had here is bring real life experience also and show us what you did with your customers. So that was the question I got from the team to show how can I tie the knots together? And my first answer to them was, you did an amazing job in providing all that content for us. So give them a hand, please, because it's really helpful every single day. So really appreciate that. And I really, it's, it's extremely helpful for us. So what I want to describe here is um, if you get ready in the stage, so how should you start with a team? And very often I work with enterprise customers, large enterprise customers who probably do not have large teams to start with. But the most important thing is get everyone on the same page. And that means if you have a small team and it works on the same page, it answers questions, it knows what they are doing, you are in the best environment that you can be. And that also means if you look at that, um, very often I start with a team and say, okay, we need to answer all our questions first. So we need to understand what we will do we need to understand what we will do in the future, and we also need to know how we can plan that if it's a small team. The other recommendation I would give you is um, don't do a waterfall. Paralyze things. So start with governance at the same time as you start with adoption and change management. Because this is important. You have to bring in the whole team and let them work together and understand them. Q&A is, is important. I'm from Europe. We have a lot of questions around privacy. What do we find? What should we do? And so on. And you need to understand how Copilot interacts with you as well. And then, after you have built that trust, you can go into the second stage. That means driving adoption. And think about, you're a customer and you buy 10,000 licenses of Copilot. How would you scale that with your small team, which you built in the first step? So then you need champions. And that also mean, means think about an early adopter curve. If you have 20% of your users, it probably runs by itself. So I'm all into communities. It could be a Microsoft team. It could be a Viva Engage community where you start sharing your knowledge. And the first step here is talk with your users about their use cases and the business scenarios. I know it's all about I can summarize an email, I can summarize a meeting, I can bring those things together, but think about what are their use cases. Bring the team together, and then in the next step, do a prompt -a 
and show them how they can solve their use cases with the prompts. And for that, you can also use prompt gallery, which is also extremely useful. The most important part is that the community gets its own aha moment and that they see where they benefit most out of the Copilot journey. Also, start with surveys. So you can use Viva Pulse, you can use Microsoft Forms, you can use any other survey tool you need, but just collect feedback from the users because otherwise you uh, miss an opportunity to find good use cases and good scenarios and what you can do better. After you have done that, and think about your timeline and your scale and users start using that, um, go into the third step. It's measure impact. And I learned a lot that you can't value what you can't measure. And I get tons of questions about, I don't know, is it worth it? Should we really start our journey with Copilot? Should we really do that? And think about that if you have your service in place, you got the user feedback, you have the KPIs, go with Copilot Analytics or Viva Insights and measure the impact Copilot has on your users. And then you will see how much value you get out of that. Also, one of the things is, um, I learned a lot with feedback when I speak with my users or with my user um, base in the community, I learned tons with that feedback. So always listen to your users and always trust your users. They know what they are doing. That being said, back to Alison. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you all so much for your attention today. Where is our, there it is. <laughs> so we wanted to close with a key takeaway slide um, of all of the great resources that we shared with you up, as across each leg of the co-pilot adoption journey. Um, and so hopefully you'll find these resources very useful. The learnings that we've gained, something that you're able to implement today in your organization. Um, and we're here absolutely and always to support you on your AI journey and transformation. Um, and we're here also outside in case you have any questions. Thank you so much for your attention today. Thank you for hanging in there late. Um, we hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>